Nobody gets this question right. Nobody. Uh, let's see. Hopefully, if you get it right, feel free to celebrate in the comments. All right? If you got this without my help, you deserve it. This is crazy. Okay. So we got a chart. I don't really understand it. I don't care. I'm going to go right to the paragraph because that's where I need to kind of get something to work with here, right? So we need to support these people's conclusion. We're going to get some stuff about what's happening, but let's let's focus on their conclusion. Urbanization, industrialization, and the warming climate create thermal pollution in the shallow subsurface soil. Suzanne A. Benz and colleagues analyzed thousands of sites on three continents under one scenario in which surface temperature remains at the current level and another in which the surface reaches the maximum plausible temperature. That's what they say right here. They then categorized each site according to the percentage of local home heating needs that could be met using this excess subsurface heat. Right, So that's right here. The team concluded that if surface temperature approaches the maximum plausible level, so the black, uh, the percentage of sites where thermal pollution could feasibly contribute to meeting home heating needs will increase. So there's there's our main thing, right? If the, subsur if the surface temperature approaches the maximum plausible level, so as we get to the black, the percentage of sites where thermal pollution could feasibly contribute to meeting home heating needs will increase. Okay, well, local heating needs met, it looks like for the current temperature, it's zero, right? That's this box here. And then as we get to the higher temperature, more than 25%, whatever that is, um, are going to, or ugh, this is so tricky, I'm already making a mistake. So 80% uh, or about that of the sites will be able to meet more than 25% of their home heating needs with this new higher temperature, right? Whereas before it was only, whatever that is, 15%. Uh, of the sites, right? So it basically increase the temperature, this changes, this goes up. All right, so let's let's take a look. A, under both temperature conditions, less than 10% of sites were in the up to 25% group. Let's check that out. Less than 10% of sites were in the up to 25% group. That seems right, right? That seems like that. Okay, so that seems true. Okay, so yes. But at the maximum plausible surface temperature, almost 80% of sites could have all their local heating needs met by thermal pollution. And you might be going, oh yeah, look, 80%, it seems, seems pretty good. But nope, that's the one word that does it, all. It does not say they could have all of their local heating needs met by thermal pollution. It says they could have more than 25% of their heating needs met by thermal pollution. So that's different, right? More than 25% could be 26%. That's not all, right? That's not 100%. So this is wrong because of that one word. That is the kind of thing we see more often on regular old passage questions, main idea things, because these quantifier words can have a big impact. Here, the quantifier is less about the, the numbers uh, in the, 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 for the rectangles and more about understanding the, the scale, like what do the X and Y axes even mean? So that's tough. That's not common. I think that's why a lot of people get this one wrong is they're not looking at that aspect of the chart. But let's continue. B, at current surface temperatures, more than 80% of the sites have no need for supplemental local home heating from subsurface thermal pollution. I don't know what they need, right? I mean, it says that they can't do it, right? So more than 80% can't get any, but I, I, what they need, I don't know. So I don't, that's another one of those strong words, those trap answers that we're used to. So uh, I don't know, um, but at the maximum plausible surface temperature, more than 70% of sites exhibit significantly greater home heating needs. Again, this is not true. So yes, that number uh, for the black box right here looks like it's more than 70, but, but look at what the choice says. It's changing the game. It's changing what the chart is about, right? More than 70% of sites exhibit significantly greater home heating needs. This chart is not showing that the heating needs of the homes goes up. It's just saying what percent of their heating needs can be uh, fulfilled by this subsurface uh, soil heat, whatever, right? So it's, it's not like they need more heat. It's just that more of the heat that they need can be provided by the ground, I guess. So this is changing the game. Again, it's not about the chart showing us the wrong numbers. It's about us not knowing what the chart is showing at all. So this is this is just wrong. It's not what we're getting out of the chart. C, at current surface temperatures, more than 80% of sites can meet at most 25% of local home heating needs with subsurface thermal pollution. So this is 
the gray bars, let's switch colors for this. So up to 25% means we're including two groups. And at the current temperature, so that's the gray box, uh, it's like 80 and then this extra little bit. So almost 85 or something. So more than 80. Yeah, that seems true then. Yes, because uh, we're adding the two gray bars uh, here and here and seems good. So that seems okay. Uh, but at the maximum plausible uh, surface temperature, more than 80% of sites can meet greater than 25% of local home heating needs. But at the maximum plausible surface temperature, okay, more than 80% of sites can meet greater than 25% of local home heating needs. Uh, that seems right. Um, but at the maximum plausible surface temperature, that's the, the black, uh, more than 80% of sites can meet greater than 25% of local home heating needs. More than 80% of sites, that seems to be right here, can meet more than 25%. So seems good. Let's look at D. At current surface temperatures, more than 80% of the sites cannot use subsurface thermal pollution to meet any portion of local home heating needs. And that sounds strong. Right, but more than 80% at the current, and let's switch to blue, more than 80% at the current cannot use it. Well, if they can use only 0%, that, that's, that's that they can't use it, right? So that seems true, right? This is more than 80%. So that seems true too. They don't notice that they didn't use 0% though, right? They, they phrased it differently. Why? To make it harder to notice that that's, that's what they're talking about. Um, but at the maximum plausible surface temperature, that percentage drops below 20%. So again, we're looking at the gray bars, and notice this is now dropping to less than 20%. Yeah, and uh, yeah, there you go. That's also true. It's looking at it in a different way. So how is that possible? Our two answers right. Well, now we gotta go back because now the passage is going to tell us this is that, that idea of a wedge, right? There is something that must separate these choices. They are both factually true according to the chart. At least I think, I, I think so. Uh, let's look at the, the, um, the conclusion again. The team concluded that if surface temperature approaches the maximum plausible level, the percentage of sites where thermal pollution could feasibly contribute to meeting home heating needs will increase. So what they are saying is, okay, uh, increase the temperature leads to an increase in, uh, I guess like, I don't want to say this, uh, contribution, right? So the more the temperature means that the more you can have the sites contribute. But this is where it gets tricky. The downside of this, literally, is that the, the fewer sites that there will be no contribution. And that's what D is talking about, is that there are fewer sites where you will have no, where is it, cannot use sub for surface thermal pollution. So that's why this question is insane and everyone gets it wrong. Because not only is it hard to find the, like even know what the answer choices are talking about, but the answer choice is talking about it in the opposite way that the passage is talking about it. It's the same trend, right? They are saying here that you increase the temperature, more places are going to be able to use this particular source of heating, right? But that means fewer won't not be able to do that, right? So that means you'll have like basically, yes, this whole column is what we're looking at. Fewer will be unable, is what I want to say. Fewer will be unable to use this type of heat. So why is C wrong? Well, it's because current surface temperatures, uh, they can use at most 25%. Well, at most 25%. It's including this other group. Uh, and uh, it doesn't seem that that's what we want because of the way that the, the passage is talking. They're talking about... Um, it feasibly, meaning possibly contributing. And so they're really in their own stupid way telling us to focus on the 0%, not the ones that already allow a little bit of this, this heating source to work. We want the ones that don't let any. And then as we increase the temperature, the number where we can't use this at all drops down significantly. So choice C is including a group that doesn't quite fit with what the passage wants. What do you think? Crazy, right? I obviously would have some trouble with this question if I saw it on a test. Uh, this is just insane. This is insane. This is about as hard as these get, though. So if you kind of get it, uh, great. If you don't get it, eh, no, it doesn't matter. You're going to be able to skip a question or two on the actual test and maximize your points by focusing on other stuff. This is a great example of a question that is not worth most people's time.
You don't need an 800. 790 is fine. Get rid of this. Don't worry about it. Do other stuff. Make sure everything else is correct on your exam. It's much more, uh, much better use of your time than struggling through this nonsense.